Okay, um, Bene, are you ready to get started? Absolutely. Thank you, Lorna, and yes. welcome everyone. Thank you for joining. Thank you, Naledi, for joining as well. Um, it's it's great to have this space for talking about Deal Plus. It's a project we really, really care. We have put a lot of effort uh, in the past years so together for building this uh, initiative. So let me uh, talk about Deal Plus. Let me introduce myself first. I'm Benedetta. I work for the Information Lab since 2015. Uh, I was part of the data school, which is a program of two years and a half where we learn tablet analytics and we become ex experts on tech consultancy. I'm now responsible of the uh, consultants of support and development. And I'm also the creator of Teal Plus, which is an initiative of the information lab to help NGOs to make sales of their data. So we, we definitely know the data sits at the heart of every business decision, but often in the charity sector, in the public sector, there are no resources or low resources. And that's where and why we come in place. And uh, uh, of course, our collaboration with Naledi. So thank you again for being here. Naledi, do you want to introduce yourself? Absolutely. Hi, everyone. I'm Nalidi, and I was also part of the Data School program, um, one cohort after Bene, so I've graduated for quite a while now. And after I finished the Data School, I went to work as an analytics manager with a small charity called Operation Fistula. Operation Fistula works with women and health providers in um, in developing countries to provide help to women who have an obstetric fistula. And after that, I went freelance and um, currently work four days a week for UNDP as a data visualization specialist um, and still do some freelance projects on the side as well. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Naledi. So yeah, I wanna talk about the beginning of Deal Plus, how we have started, our strategy, our main projects, our collaborations, and of course, our super exciting partnerships. And one of that is with the United Nations, in particular, the United Nations Development Program, where Naledi works at the moment. So we're very, very excited uh, about all of this. But let me tell you a little bit how we have started this, this whole initiative. So how did we get there? Uh, so, uh, in the next slide, uh, we can see that in 2015, I joined data school, actually along with Lorna. We were in the same cohort, and we were uh, trying to learn Tableau and Altrix our best. Obviously, the beginning was, was a challenging uh, program. We wanted to learn, want to get very good and skilled uh, on Tableau and Altrix. And yeah, after a few months, actually, we, we became quite comfortable with the softwares. And, you know, in, uh, in the following years, in the following months and years, we, uh, we were able to build charts, uh, building compelling um, narratives for companies, uh, uh, shaping data, dealing with uh, databases and uh, stakeholders and all, all of that, which was amazing. We, you know, I found, uh, I realized I was, I was getting better and better on the software. So I was very uh, pleased with the results and everything. But then I started to question if and how to use these skills for social causes. Because as I said before, data are sitting at the heart of every single decision, you know, for charities, for public sector, for uh, private sector. So could I, how could I use my skills for pro bono causes? And that's where I found uh, the Tableau Foundation. So at the next slide, you can see that uh, I started to uh, collaborate with the um, next one, Lorna, thank you. Uh, yeah, with the Tableau Foundation. So Tableau Foundation is the foundation of Tableau, which allows you to sign up as a service corp. So you sign up, you basically describe your profile. Uh, let me show you on the next slide. Uh, I can show you my profile on the uh, service court. You know, you describe what you're good at. So the sport, the storytelling, visual analytics, data prep. Um, so you describe a little bit why you're doing it as well, because it's rewarding, it's helping, and it's essential. And we want to basically, you know, close the, the skill gap between the public and the private sector. So yeah, I signed up, you know, full of hope. I was like, let's see uh, what kind of NGOs reach out, what kind of, you know, projects uh, are available. And I got the first call uh, on the next slide. I'll show you that in 2018, 17, probably, I got this call from the World Food Program. 
So the World Food Program is part of uh, uh, the UN and they had three crises and they needed really, really urgently uh, data uh, volunteers. Because uh, for example, in this project, there was a need to compare need against assistance in West Africa. So they were actually looking for uh, volunteers to reshape the old data set, create dashboards that were quickly uh, let them know where actually they had to send uh, assistance in West Africa. It was a very, very um, rewarding project for me and actually gave me uh, this idea of like, yeah, absolutely, this is worth it, this makes sense. Uh, I will keep sharing my skills for uh, pro bono causes. The following year, uh, on the next slide, uh, yeah, this is the full World Food Program, as you can see on the right. This was uh, the dashboard that they used um, quite a lot for determine where, which areas uh, uh, they needed uh, the most. So obviously very, very rewarding. The, in 2018, on the following uh, year, actually has been a bit of a game changer for us because Naledi, which you just saw, she uh, finished the program with us, uh, with the data school, and she went to work for Operation Fistula. So I will, I will talk a little bit later more about challenges that we have with charities, but one of the biggest challenges is definitely let them understand what we can offer. So our services, most of them, they don't know about these pro bono programs and also how to use us because we, we are available, we're there, we can support, but most of them, they, they're not really you know, familiar with uh, this kind of thing. So with Naledi there, it was perfect because obviously she's fully aware of what we are capable of because it's the same skill that she has. And we started quite, quite a few collaborations, very rewarding one. Uh, one was for International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women. We did our blog about this. Uh, we started to do in-house uh, training. That was uh, actually the first time that we started to train our whole team about um, you know, Tableau skills. And also we did some uh, uh, spatial analytics, some mapping. So all very, very good. And another interesting project was on the following year in 2019, I got in contact with uh, the UNDP and they wanted to track uh, engagement during the climate change um, week in New York in 2019, there was like um, uh, for the sustainable development goals of so 2030, they wanted to track some hashtags, some mentions uh, to understand what was going on. This was actually quite a big project because we needed uh, to use the Twitter API. So we had to download daily uh, a, a huge amount of information to, to understand the the sentiment and the uh, all the mentions of the hashtag and, and stuff it was very very rewarding uh very, very interesting project after this i realized on the last slide you actually can see that is me realizing how many other people are actually volunteering because i'm doing this obviously i know other people that are doing it but how what about if we just consolidate all of this in one organization, in one entity, in one name, because then we can share resources. Um, thank you, Lorna. I'm gonna share now uh, the uh, website. And then we came up with the idea of the website. So 2020, actually, for before the website, we have consolidated everything in one entity. We just call it Till for Good. So we literally asked everyone in the company who is volunteering for NGOs, who is doing charity work. Let's uh, put everything together. And then we moved to a more uh, unique name, I would say, uh, Till Plus, and we did this page on our website. So as you can see here, you can, there's a bit of description of what we do. So it's an initiative of the information lab. You can get in touch. So charities can now get in touch through this button and. Uh, um, explain what they're looking for, if they want to have a chat with us and see how we can help. But I would say the most important thing on the website is that now you can share the site with charities because before the conversation, as I said, could have been a bit challenging because it's, it's hard to let them understand, to educate, educate NGOs on what's possible with analytics, right? So uh, with the website, you can just share this page and show them all the projects that we have done. 
So as I said, we, we have helped the UNDP, uh, another uh, fantastic volunteer, Colin, he uh, he's a, has helped to plus quite a lot with the IGM Bank and with other projects. Um, so as you can see over here, we have each specific project and we have a page where we describe our collaborations, uh, what do they do, how we have helped, and some links on the work itself that we have done. So everything very, very uh, rewarding. Also, we do some uh, internal projects. So for example, for uh, International Day to End Violence Against Women, we have uh, uh, gathered a group of volunteers internally and uh, uh, we have gathered some uh, data provided by the UN and uh, we have analyzed uh, violence against women, uh, especially on coast. Um, so yeah, we made a dashboard, we shared some information, we raised awareness. So, you know, it's, uh, there is a lot of benefits on this beside obviously um, using your skill to raise awareness uh, and having an impact on social causes. But you also understand from a company point of view, you have uh, employee satisfaction and that which, which, is, which is a lot. And uh, brand recognition for sure, and also you allow your consultants to work on a variety of projects, right, which is also the uh, aim of our uh, program. Um, also, uh, in 2020, we had another partnership, which is a more collaboration um, with the Asian Transgender Network. Uh, they are actually looking to build a hate report. So right now they're gathering data around um, hate report against transgender people in Asia. We have done some demos on uh, with uh, European data. And as you can imagine, results are shocking. Um, so again, it's, it's, it's clear how, how important it can be to, to share your skills for something which you know, can have a strong impact on you know, uh, raising awareness then with uh, uh, policymakers and so on. Um, also, we have done a couple of partnerships. So as I said, we have done an amazing partnership with the UN and Naledi is gonna uh, dig into, into that a little bit more. And uh, um, I'll, I'll stop. I'll stop sharing. Um, and then another one with was with Bees for Social Good. So Bees for Social Good is an initiative where charity can share their data for uh, one month, two month and a half, and anyone in the world can use that data to build some dashboard, and then those dashboards will be used. Um, on the website or to raise awareness, all of that. So we have partnered with them, partnered with the UN, and another very rewarding thing has been a award from Tableau. So we won uh, Data for Good, EMEA Data for Good uh, from Tableau, which is obviously, um, you know, super exciting, but also very important that Tableau has that kind of award to recognize the, the effort of, uh, you know, pro bono um, solutions and help. Um, so yeah. That as this is our year, we have other collaboration. For example, right now we are working with eAccess. eAccess is an initiative for climate change and uh, is trying to gather all the government policies uh, in uh, one dashboard so that every, every, every single um, government and, and country can visualize uh, this, uh, which is going to be like concentrated dashboard for all these policies and it's going to be released uh, next month. Uh, and so on. So very exciting. And yeah, Naledi, do you want to talk a little bit about our partnership uh, and how, how it works? Um, so initially, I wanted to talk a little bit more about the experience of managing volunteers. So going back to my time at Operation Fistula, um, it was actually a few people from the information lab who approached me who said, look, you know, I'd really love to do some volunteer work. Is there anything that I can help with? And we started to sort of get this group together of people from the information lab who are all really interested in, uh, in helping out and building visualizations for us or in helping with Alteryx workflows and analytics. And this sort of introduced me to the challenges of managing volunteers. So um, amongst the audience, I don't know if you are volunteer managers yourself or if you are interested in volunteering or if this is completely new to you, but I think the first thing to understand is that 
um, having a volunteer is never actually free because there's always time that you invest and you need to find the right balance between you know, is it actually going to take me longer to explain this to the volunteer and give them all the required access than it is to, for me to do it myself? Or, you know, am I going to ask the volunteer to do this and they might drop off in two weeks because they then have too much work to do or because they're not interested anymore? And would it actually be more cost efficient for us to hire somebody because of the sort of loss of time that we would experience through that? So what I noticed pretty quickly at Operation Fistula was that managing all the different volunteers that we had, even though they were all people that I knew and was familiar with, it became quite time intensive. And what sort of crystallized out of that was that Benedetta started to take over and became my volunteer manager. And it just increased the productivity and the ease of using the volunteer skills so much because now I didn't have to check with everybody in order to see who was available, I could just ask Benedetta and she would do that job for me. Um, and, you know, Benna, you'd have much better insight into who's actually available, what, what are people's skills, and it, it made it so much more effective. And so we actually collaborated on quite a few things then already. And then I, I went back to the information lab when I, in early 2020, I met with Janet from Crowd to Map. Um, at the time I was just starting to freelance and um, Janet had reached out to me about some work that I had done at Operation Fistula. And I decided to help her pro bono with some of her analytics work and sort of become an analytics advisor for Crowd to Map. But there was a lot of work to do. And I figured, you know, there's actually more to do than I have time for it. So I went back to the information lab and asked Benedetta, you know, do you have anybody who, available who could help with these projects? And again, we sort of, we had these introductions and we started this collaboration and became more involved with crowd to map and have since built a few dashboards and improved their analytics. Um, so that was really great. So at UNDP now, I, I was brought on to help with a website, which is data.undp.org. I'll share the link in the chat later. Um, and this is a website that we started last year at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, people from across teams at UNDP came together to say, what can we do to provide data to help countries with the socioeconomic, um, thank you, Lorna, <laughs> socioeconomic recovery from COVID-19 because UNDP is the organization within the UN responsible for the socioeconomic recovery, whereas WHO, for instance, is looking at the health aspects of the pandemic. And so we're really looking at how is this pandemic impacting women compared to men? How is it impacting small businesses? How does that differ between countries? And we're putting together data and analytics on that. And I was initially brought on to build the data visualizations for that. And we're in a small team. And it was pretty clear after a you know, very short time that it was just going to be too much for just me to do. So we started building a team of volunteers and we went two ways. The first one was to go through UNV, which is the UN volunteering organization. And we put out an ad and we got about 40 volunteers together who have skills on um, web development, data visualization, data analysis, AI, and these things. But because a lot of the visualizations on data.unip.org are built with Tableau, I suggest that we also partner with TIL Plus because um, obviously I knew that TIL Plus would have the required skills. Um, given that we are a big bureaucratic organization, that process takes a while to, to set up those contracts. Um, but luckily we were able to get all of that sorted. And so I started recently, and I wanna tell you about a specific project that I had, which was to build a data visualization for Moldova. So our Moldova country office did a project, um, they did a social economic impact assessment to see what the impact of the pandemic was on households and on businesses. So they did two separate studies. We talked to them in January, I think, maybe even before January, um, and they shared their data with us and realized pretty quickly that there was a lot to do there. And it just, you know, there was just never time for me to really look at it properly. We finally, before we managed to get this contract with TIL Plus finalized, 
um, we asked one of the volunteers that we had from the UNV database that we manage ourselves. Um, and he created something in Tableau, but it took a few weeks for something to be ready and the results just weren't really usable. It was a nice visualization, but it hadn't really been thought through. He hadn't really gone through sort of the, the depths of the data, hadn't really engaged with it enough. And at that point said, you know, he doesn't really have time to do it, to make the changes that I asked him to do. So that's another big thing with volunteers, right? They have other work commitments, they might not actually be that interested in the project and there should always be something in it for both of both sides right you know we are getting help with the work that we're doing but the volunteers are hopefully working on something that they find interesting something that they find rewarding and might even learn something new from it so i went to till plus and um, was connected with a volunteer and she you know she was really great. Um, so she, she got the project done in a, an amazing time and really put so much effort into it that um, I would have never had the time for and just brought something really amazing to the table. Um, she it was the first time that she was working with with survey data and so she went to somebody else within the, within the information lab to ask for help and that's another great benefit that you know I don't have to provide that support there are a bunch of data experts around. So they can ask Bene, they can ask other experts within the organization to say, look, you've worked with survey data before. Can you, can you share your expertise? Can I ask you some questions? Um, and it was just really, really reliable. So she'd check in with me every week, sent me updates, record little videos for me, which just meant that the, the time on my side was saved and having to constantly chase up and ask. And I didn't have to worry about, you know, how good is the result going to be because I could rely on the sort of standard that I know um, the information lab has. And even if it wasn't that standard, I know I could go back and say, look, there's actually some changes that we need and maybe this person isn't available anymore, but somebody else will jump in and make those improvements. And I'm not saying that the UNV people are not good, we've had, a bunch of really great volunteers from there. It's just a little bit less reliable because anybody can apply and you don't have a vetting system. Um, and so those really great volunteers that we've met, we try to keep them and try to engage them in more projects. But every once in a while, you'll get somebody who looks really great on paper, but actually can't really deliver or you know, has something going on and can't pass the project onto somebody else. So you have to start over again. And that's, and we also do have to do all the communication ourselves. So we've got a system internally where we register our project and then somebody gets in touch with three volunteers to ask them if they're available and have to wait for them to write back, then set up a meeting with them, all of those things. Um, so, so yeah, so it's been, it's been a real relief to, to have that security of being able to say, you know, we've got a Tableau project. I know I can go to Till Plus. I just have to write to Benedetta. And, you know, I know, you know, you're going to take over and, and help me find the right person for the job. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. So I'm really, really happy to be here today and be able to answer some questions about this and to, um, to share more about the work that we do. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you, Naledi. Actually, on, on what you just said, is, is very important that, you know, the, the power of two plus is that, you know, we have, you know, more than 100 people in UK, then we have all the other offices in, uh, in the rest of Europe. Actually, I have a huge collaborator. I want to say thank you, Kevin, from the uh, Dublin office. He's an amazing uh, two plus, and in general, he's doing lots of pro bono work. So, you know, beside the volunteers itself, because obviously, let's say we have 10, 15 people that want to volunteer, we also have all the rest of the people which are very skilled in Tableau and Alteryx, but also in some specific skills. Uh, I'll make an example. Uh, we were supporting actually Tableau and in this project, Campaign Zero, which is a US uh, initiative to help stopping police violence uh, against people. Um, so they asked us to actually do some data vetting. So we were supposed to match, to look a database and a website and check if the numbers were right. 
manually. Right. So, you know, we were five people, but imagine the amount of hours for doing that, uh, just to check that uh, the whole process in the middle went correctly. And this was by state, by county, by police office. So it was just like millions and millions uh, of numbers to check. Now, one solution was to actually download the website and it with something repetitive, iterative, and then match with all tricks, that's the software we use for data, uh, the data set. Now, it sounds all easy, but actually it's very complex. And I wasn't able, I wasn't able to do it. So I asked uh, people inside the co in my company, which they're not necessarily, you know, raising their hand to be volunteers, but I asked them, can you help me on uh, some API download, you know, and in a week, um, you know, before there was one person and after another person, they download the whole website. And, you know, and we saved so much time to, to campaign zero for this data vetting process, just because, you know, we have very powerful tools, Ultras is very powerful for this stuff. Um, so yeah, that's an example of, you know, as Anladi said, we, we do have volunteers, but also we have people that not, not necessarily have, you know, said, I want to be a volunteer specifically, but once you, you offer them, you know, you, maybe they have, a bit of time between clients, they are, you know, they're on bench or they're just waiting for a new engagement to start and they have a bit of free time. And, you know, I, I, I offered them, do, there is this project, do, do you want to participate? And for example, Sadia, she, she has been working on the Moldova survey data and she, you know, she had a couple of weeks, which uh, she was a client and she was more than happy to support. And she found this project very rewarding, very, she learned about surveys. And obviously she's also, her work is gonna be featured in the UN website. That's the other thing, like uh, that, that's a win-win situation for everyone because you know we, we really want to use our skills. We, we, we love to use our skills. And if we can use it for this kind of uh, initiatives, obviously it's a win-win situation. I would also um, add to that, that I think the, the great thing is that, you know, everybody has different motivations going into this. Some people just want to, do whatever they can to add impact and sometimes that means doing quite tedious things that you know just take time but you need somebody to do them others want to improve their skills um, but you also have people who are just interested in the kind of problems that we're solving so i remember being um just a, a little informal project i guess um last year or must have been more than that ago um and we because it was at operation fistula and we had a problem with loading up images and rotating them because they'd sometimes come in sort of odd directions. And I was in the information lab office and just, just asked somebody there, you know, do you like, what is this about? Do you think you can like help me with this? And they got so interested in it um, that they actually took it forward and just wanted to solve the problem for us. And it wasn't sort of motivated by, you know, I've got time or I want to do this for a specific organization. It's just, uh, you know, this is an interesting problem. And so you've got all different types of motivations and the fact that you have so many people there means that it's you know you, you'll find somebody for for all of these things absolutely absolutely and um yeah just you know just to go back a little bit on the challenges uh with the ngos is uh, really about you know education and let, let uh, on analytics in general was possible because uh, you know just the example you just made on rotation you know because you have worked for us you know the you know the 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 skills that we have because they are the same skills that you have. Uh, but in general, you know, it's really about getting uh, and sharing our work, our work as much as possible to let charity knows what we can do and how we can support. And uh, yeah, we are obviously getting a, a, a much better result with the website because we can share what, what we have done. And so we're trying to keep up to date. Also for the future, uh, as this uh, UNDP project grows and more people want to particip participate, we're gonna try to find uh, you know, a system for you know, putting in place the, 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 the project and then track the project, track the progress, so what projects are on, what projects are off, because we get more and more interest from, from volunteers, which is, which is great. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to 2022 and see what uh, what we can do with Till Plus and with this collaboration. Um, any question?
Um, there's currently none in the chat, but I have a, a few questions. Um, so what does the Information Lab get out of doing Till Plus? Um, is there anything in it for us as the Information Lab? Or is it mainly to help the um, NGOs? So for me, there is a big win-win situation. One, my, my biggest one is employee satisfaction because obviously, you know, we do a lot as a company for employee satisfaction in terms of like, you know, well-being and making sure that people feel uh, they belong and uh, we, we try to build a, a system which is inclusive and everything. But also like, you know, client, you learn a lot from client work, but also you can learn so much from this project because they are very sometimes tricky in terms of like the data, getting the data. I remember when we were trying to get data from Concare, which is a very uh, well-used database for, for charities and stuff. Uh, so is it, as, as Nalidi said, some people are just moved by the challenge itself because you learn so much. And so for me, number one is employee satisfaction, which is very, very important. The second one is definitely brand recognition uh, because then, you know, it's not the point that you sound that you do some good stuff. It is really like, you know, you, you're a private company, you have lots of great resources, you know, it's, it's, it just makes so much sense. It's not just something you should do, but it just makes so much sense, sense to share your resources for, um, for these kind of causes. And then, you know, you get great partnerships and so on. Um, and then the, the last one for sure, the, the variety of projects that people can work on, because you, you know, most of the, most of the times you, those dashboards, they're gonna be um, crucial. On some, on some decisions that charity can make throughout your work. And that's the, 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 the most successful aim uh, and uh, can, you can have after a project. So yeah, we want to give this opportunity. In fact, after each project, people are very, they actually say thank you to us. They actually say, thank you, thank you for letting me work on this because it was so rewarding, it was so uh, just good. It just felt very good and I learned a lot. And then how do you find the, the different organizations to help? So obviously Nalida is great because she's come to us because she knows about um, what we do and how we work. But how do you go and find other um, companies that we can we can really help and make a difference for? Do we do we want them to reach out to us or are we still um, reaching out to them? Yeah, so definitely word of mouth. So, you know, for example, Colin and uh, other people, they have, they were already working in the public sector before they, they had connections. So, so definitely now they can say, actually, I, I have these skills that I can use for you. Uh, a lot from the Sublo Foundation. So for example, the Asian, the Pacific Transgender Network, they reach out to um, Andy, uh, a colleague of us and saying, you know, I, I actually found out that Tableau Foundation can help us. So Tableau Foundation, I'll leave a bit. Uh, but I would say, yeah, word of mouth. Through our website, I would say not, not much, just because probably, you know, again, NGOs don't really fully understand what we, we can do for them for free. Obviously, there is all. I, I can make an example. I organized a free training, Tableau training for charities in the office. And... Um, not maybe in London, central London, before COVID. I imagine it, it's a free opportunity for charities to learn uh, skills and we didn't have many people showing up. But again, I feel like there is a, uh, our challenge is really to educate and just to what's possible, what services we provide and so on. I'd, yeah, I'd add to that, that that's one of the, the big challenges is, so from my experience with CrowdToMap as well, who had initially contacted me about some different question relating to their mapping, it was very clear that they had a desire for analytics, but they didn't see necessarily how they would be able to use it and how they would even get started. So if anybody is interested in, um, in volunteering, that's actually a really useful position as well to just help, a you know, if you have a charity that you know who's interested to, to just guide them and help them find resources like this. So. I don't think hands-on I've done, you know, that much work for crowd to map, but just sort of creating this connection and advising them on how they can use it, um, I think was a was a big help for them. And um, also helping them understand how they can grow their analytics. And I think especially for small charities, it's often not a priority. 
because they, they have a lot of other things they need to think about. And analytics probably isn't sort of one of the first things that they attend to. And I think that's a, that's a shame because obviously we believe in, in the power of analytics at all levels. And um, sometimes that's just something that needs to be communicated. And I completely understand how hard it is to, to get started with that. And knowing how at the UNDP these procurement processes happen, finding organization to do work for you um, and having them go through the vetting process and all of that, it can be incredibly time consuming. So I think this, this sort of making that connection between the information lab, um, TIL Plus and the charities is a, is a big important step. And I think, as you already mentioned, you know, a big network is really important for that. People sharing um, their resources, sharing, you know, this webinar or the TIL Plus website, whenever they, you know, you talk to a charity, check with them, you know, what, what's your analytics doing? Do you want any help? Can we get you in touch with somebody um, can be hugely helpful. And that's also what I would want to add to the benefits for TIL Plus, um, given, given the, that, you know, the, the data school is a big part of the information lab and that that is a, you know, it's a career progression, career training area. Um, the connections that volunteers can build through these projects are immensely helpful. So, I mean, Benedetta, the, pro <laughs> the, the connection that you made with UNDP, with Guyan was, you know, how I ended up in this role effectively, because you then sort of shared that connection with me. And you do have some people in the data school who are interested in going into a career in, in social good. So having more connections to charities and for charities to know, get to know these people, um, I've definitely, when we've hired for, for roles, I've always looked at the information lab and especially at the people that I've already worked with through volunteering because I've already been able to see their skills. And so as a you know, job finding mechanism, um, that's a hugely helpful effect as well. Yeah, absolutely. Like if someone after data school wants to uh, go to work in the public sector, the best thing they can do, they have so many options. They have so many chances to volunteer while they're doing the program. And as you said, get those connections, which probably way more than when we did the data school, which, you know, we had us and then the Tableau Foundation, which obviously, you know, it, I signed up probably after four months after training. So I did, you know, most of my DS. Uh, uh, with the, the service corp but again as we said not many charities reach out and all of that so con the the possibilities that data schoolers have now to connect with charities are huge and also um, uh, just before they were talking about um, charities and challenges I would say another challenge is definitely to make sure they to, to make sure you skill them up as well, because imagine you work, you build our work, our project, but then if no one in house is able to um, fix any issue or uh, refresh data and so on to have a basic understanding of the software, then you you actually you know you want to empower them, you want to let them carry on with the work, and also one thing that we do is to let them know that they can get a discounted license. There is this system that you spend sixty dollars probably through a donor. Um, or oh, Tableau license. So, you, you know, you explain these things to charity in order to, to, again, to empower them and to make sure they can carry on after uh, you, you finish the work. We've, we've got actually a question on that in the chat about the, um, you know, free licenses for charities. Do you want to talk a little bit more about how that works? Yeah, so before actually uh, it was free for students and for uh, charities under, I would say, two million. So I don't, I don't know, I don't know the exact figure, but something like that. Uh, but now it's through a donor. So you find a donor that pays the taxes, which is probably $60, something like this. And, uh, you know, you're going to be like a sponsor. So, for example, I can sponsor a uh, crowd to map charity uh, and they get the license, which is a Tableau desktop, Tableau prep and uh, um, access to online or, or yeah, uh, something like that. And uh, yeah, that's what you, you know, you start the conversation saying, I'm gonna uh, make the, the project, I'm gonna, let's spend some time for handover, let's spend some time for explaining how the dashboard works. 
let's talk about this kind of license and, and also the information lab we run a weekly free training every week we run a loads of free training about the blow table crap all tricks spatial predictive so you have a, a you know throughout that that's the civil thing as Nadia was saying our you know network is big and is strong in terms of like we can volunteer but also we have all our uh, uh, tech consultancy which we do training and, and so on so we we can actually point you to so many resources um that i would say that's probably the most uh, valuable bit of two plus that we have such a um, rich network in that sense that we can help in many ways the other thing that a lot of people aren't aware of is that you can actually get tableau public for free so at undp for data.undp.org we actually don't have any, we, we have a few licenses for the for the Tableau builders, but even that wouldn't necessarily be, you know, needed, um, but we just use Tableau public. We, we don't use Tableau for internal analytics, um, we use Power BI, but for external visualizations, there's there's not a cost involved. And um, that's that's a great way that charities can get started because there's just, there's no, starting cost to it and maybe it's just a way to try out maybe it's just a way to learn um but it is it can be a little bit hidden that that exists there's also a question in the chat about um what about charities that have private data that need to be analyzed for internal purposes is that possible to help with a charity if they don't have a tablet license so for that internal reporting or is it mainly for the external reports for charities no, actually, uh, uh, yeah, we help in uh, any instance. And uh, I remember that I helped, for example, UNICEF and uh, the um, Guinea-Bissau uh, for COVID response. And uh, all the dashboard were for internal, uh, it was just for uh, literally the doctors to see the patient, if they got COVID and when, and if it was the first time, how many, um, how many uh, members of the family and so on. It was all internal staff. And uh, uh, I think we share through uh, Tableau Online, that obviously is a private access, or Tableau Reader, which is free to download. So they didn't have uh, the, the skills and it was not really thinkable to, to actually skill them up. But they wanted this uh, dashboard ready. It was actually a collaboration um, with uh, yeah, UNICEF as well. There were some people UNICEF running the Python script and we were doing the dashboard bit. But yeah, we share through Tableau Online and Tableau Reader. So yeah, we, we actually helped a lot on just internal project. I would say on COVID a lot because another project was with the Dimaggi, which they uh, own Comcare. And it was before the Ministry of uh, Togo. And uh, uh, again, they wanted to have a dashboard on COVID response uh, to let the Ministry of Togo understand what was going on. So, you know, it could totally be internal. Uh, on COVID, actually on COVID time, uh, the Tableau Foundation and the Service Corp asked if People wanted to be, uh, you know, uh, available for dashboards on COVID, um, COVID response. So yeah, I uh, I put my name and I got a couple of uh, requests on that. Um, so yeah, there's, there's one more question. Um, how can non-information lab folks get involved? So could they get involved in Till Plus, or is it best to go via the Tableau or Altrix foundations? Well, I would say, why don't you go on our website and uh, uh, click get in touch. There is a form, I can actually explain, you know, how you would like to help, what kind of skills you can, you can bring. I'm sure, you know, we, we are always happy to have call and to, to see how you can support. Cool, okay. Um, I don't think there's any other questions in the chat. Do you, either of you have any other questions that you think it could be good to ask? Answer, ask, same thing. <laughs> well, I want to say thank you to Naledi because uh, I am uh, absolutely grateful uh, to her for her support and uh, effort and commitment to, to this because we have been working on you know, the creation of T Plus for, for many years and uh, she's fantastic to work with. So thank you, Naledi. Yeah, well, thanks very much, Naledi. <laughs> Oh, thank you. No, it's been it's been, as I said, really great to to have a a place I can go um, to to get help when when I need it. Um, given that you know procurement and funding is not a quick process in in my work, but we we still want to move a lot quicker than we can often. 
Um, I guess the only other thing that I would say to anybody out there who's, you know, interested in any of this, like if you want to have a chat, yeah, reach out to, to either of us, connect with us. Um, if you just have, you know, an urge to use your skills for good, not everybody wants to work in the charity sector full time. Um, you might, you know, have a job that you love, but just want to give a little bit of extra on the side. Um, but you don't really know how to get involved or what to where to start or what your skills even could be that you can contribute then just just get in touch um because you know there's there's always opportunities yeah um, I've just thought of one last question um what advice would you give someone who wanted to start a similar initiative at their own workplace yeah uh I have Definitely an answer. I would say, first of all, understand what your, what your company is good at, um, uh, your, your speciality, let's say, your best skill, and then make them available to uh, where public sector and where resources are low, because it's very, very important that uh, sharing resources uh, is, is so crucial. Like, we can't think about future without, without this. So, yeah, understand what you are very good at and then share that. Any advice from you, Nalidi? Um, no, definitely just, you know, think about that, that cost benefit analysis, I guess. And, you know, are you, what are you, what can you give to charities? What can you take back? Make sure that that's balanced so that you're, you're not ending up costing the charity more time than you're saving them. But also that, you know, as Ben has said, you know, your, your employees are, are getting something out of it. They're either getting, um professional development or networking or just a you know joy out of doing good um i think if if it works well then it's something that that is really amazing and can get everybody can can be good for everybody involved cool thank you Nalidi. um well i don't think there's any other questions um so thank you very much uh, Benny and Nalidi for joining me today and I'm very excited to see where Till Plus goes in the future so hopefully we'll have lots of contacts and help lots of charities along the way um, but yeah once again thank you everybody for joining um, hopefully see you another webinar soon um, and yeah well we'll see you all soon thank you Lauren thank you, thank you so much thank you Nalidi thanks everyone thanks for having me bye 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 bye